I'm currently reading through Jason Schreier's book Blood, Sweat and Pixels, all about the cutthroat nature of the video game industry and how video game creators manage to survive. It got me thinking about how the video game hobby I've enjoyed since age 12 has changed over the past 30 years, from a cottage industry peopled by creatives and plucky startups to the biggest entertainment industry on the planet. If you told 12 year old Nap that one day staying cooped up in his bedroom playing games, instead of roaming about on his bike would one day be the rule rather than the exception he would have probably cheered he'd gone whoopee but the reality is more nuanced it's great to see something you love garner mass appeal but at the same time the thing morphs to accommodate a broader audience there is much more choice but the quality can decline things become homogenized and less revelatory with each release you've seen it all before basically still if games like fifa and nba 2 K disarm the jocks so they can no longer bully me, uh, then that's a small price to pay. What I'm not happy about is the increasing discomfort I feel when I read stories about the industry that has grown up around games. Game creators getting chewed up by profit-driven mega corporations, industrious workers discarded like spent batteries once they've given their all to a project, people who just want to work on a game but end up having the joy squeezed out of them. It sounds exactly like the writers and artists I've read about or watched movies about trying to break into Hollywood. I've always wanted to write for a living myself, so I'm aware of the artist trials and tribulations. I've even experienced a few of them myself having scripts declined at the final stages and then ditched by the people who were developing them. It's for this reason I've always taken a keen interest in game development. It's similar enough that many of the experiences carry over yet far enough removed that I can be somewhat insulated from it. I can watch from the safety of this spectator box. What I'm reading, hearing about, is an industry that prioritises profit above all else. Forget innovation, imagination or even human decency. All that matters is that bottom line. The clue is in the descriptor, of course. It's an industry now. It's not an artistic movement. It's not a homebrew tech club anymore. But even in the beginning, going right back to the bedroom coders of the 80s, there were the creatives and then there were the money men who came in, the business people who took those things that were being made and turned them into marketable commodities. There's always going to be that. Maybe it's impossible for any group of creative people to remain forever free from market forces. In fact, I think that is definitely the case. If anyone has a passion and wants to make a living doing what they love, they're going to have to capitulate and bend a little bit to the money men. The only way to not do that is never care about money be the computer equivalent of Van Gogh. It's very romantic, but nobody wants that. Not even Van Gogh wanted that. He wanted to be successful. He didn't want to cut his ear off. But does the whole thing have to be so mean-spirited in the games industry, so cutthroat? Stories of developers told in the morning that they've no longer got a job. They're escorted out of the building by security, not even able to say goodbye to their colleagues, return to their desks to gather their things. Whole teams of people responsible for releasing a hit game one month and then told that they're laid off the next. It seems diabolical. It seems like the twisted outworking of some satanic influence. The only thing that comes close to it, in my mind, is crisps, which are definitely evidence of the existence of El Diablo. Over the top, I know, but you get my point. This is my hobby. These are my games, and by extension, the people who made them are my people. You, the merciless co-corporate overlords, do not have the right to treat my people like this. They make my games. But it's not just games, of course. This is callous business practices that exist in all industries. I suppose the question I wrestle with and have wrestled with all my life is, is it possible to be ethical and profitable at the same time? Does profit override ethical concerns. And although I'd like to make this an upbeat video with hope at its core, I'm afraid I decided a long time ago that no, it's not possible to have both things. Ethics, morality, decency always go out the window once money is the driving force. Just look at Monster Munch. There's nothing rewarding or edifying about them. They don't even satisfy your hunger for more than 30 minutes. They are purely designed to maximise taste because that is what people want and that is what they will buy. Screw the customer customer's health, the childhood obesity crisis, we need to sell more Monster Munch. 
that's the biggest shift in the games industry that I've seen. It used to be that a creator had an idea and a company saw it, liked it, and offered to help them sell it, ultimately screwing them out of the IP, of course. But, you know, that, that's par for the course. But now market forces drive the business and game creators are brought in to fulfill a group focused vision there's more opportunity for people to get jobs in such an industry and that's a very good thing but now you have a workforce to think about yet the games industry still seems to function as if it's a full of plucky self-starters no job security no continuity no peace of mind for the workforce people often talk about games having grown up when it comes to narrative and story with things like the last of us or graphical realism with the latest fps shooters but could it be that the industry responsible is actually languishing in an extended adolescence before its parents decide enough's enough you need to start pulling your weight around the house you need to look people in the eye and you need to stop talking to people like they're the shit on your shoe it certainly seems that way to me and there's really no excuse for it the days when these companies were run by the creatives themselves are long gone they're supposed to be grown-up businessmen in charge but that's probably the answer. Those businessmen are already making money hand over fist, so why would they change anything? What's the incentive for them to do so? This is probably going to sound hopelessly naive, but there are more important things in life than profit. You and your big house and your flash car and your bank balance will eventually all be gone. You can't take it with you to the big boardroom in the sky. All that will matter in the end is the good that you did in the world and the positive effect you had on people's lives. No, it won't help the bottom line if your employees are happy, can reliably provide for their families and have jobs for life if they so desire, but that is more important than fiscal growth for the quarter. I'm probably the wrong person to be talking about this stuff. I've never worked for a company at anything other than ground level and I actively avoided looking looking for the ladders but I empathize with those who truly want to make a go of it and invest their time and passion with a company particularly when they're the people responsible for the games I enjoy so much I would really recommend Jason Schreier's book Blood Sweat and Pixels if you haven't read it yet it's bleak at times but amid that there are moments of triumph and personal success for the game makers for my part I just wanted to make this video to say yes I love games will continue to play and enjoy them but I am mindful of the effort, heartache and sometimes the lasting trauma that can be involved for their creators. The capacity for human beings to treat each other like crap is boundless, especially when money is involved. But I really do hope that it's not inevitable and it's certainly never okay.